Welcome to the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel, where we bring you videos on installation, maintenance, and various trainings on oxygen equipment and devices. If you have comments and or questions, drop them in the comment section below or write to us, info at oxygenalliance.org. Remember to like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining for today's Oxygen Talk brought to you by Oxygen Alliance. My name is Sharon Ngozo, a biomedical engineer for Oxygen Alliance, and I'm excited to be your host today. Oxygen Talk is a video meeting where we discuss various topics related to medical oxygen. To our colleagues who observe Islam, we hope you had a joyful celebration of Eid al-Fitri. So in respect of a significant day, we rescheduled for the talk to today. So I'm hosting the call from Ilongi, Malawi, and I'd like to know where you're joining us from. So please type your name and your location in the chat. And if you want to be added to the emailing list so that you can get notification on upcoming events by the Oxygen Alliance, please type your email and send it in the chat. So today we'll have a presentation from Open YouTube by Medical Engineers. We have Jen Chaponda, Michael Smith, and David Noah. They will be discussing knowledge on filters used in oxygen generation devices. So I'm excited that you have joined us today. So please take note of the comments and even your questions because we'll be looking forward to, be, to hear from you at the end of the presentation. So without taking much of your time, I hand it over to Jen Chaponda. Over to you, Jen. Thank you so much, Sharon. Indeed, my name is Jen Chabunda. I'm a biomedical engineer at the Global Health Informatics Institute under the Open Two Initiative. So, in this presentation, we're going to cover the following. First, we'll look at an introduction to filters that are used in oxygen generation devices. Then, we're going to look at the types of filters, functions, and significance of each filter type. Uh, filter placement and configuration in oxygen generation devices, uh, maintenance and replacement of filters, quality assurance and regulatory considerations, uh, the impact of filters on patient safety and oxygen therapy efficacy, and thereafter we'll look at the good practices and tips in handling filters. So before we go into the specifics of filters that are used in oxygen generation devices, uh, let's quickly highlight why oxygen generation is important in healthcare. So firstly, uh, oxygen generation is essential for patients uh, with respiratory conditions, uh, such as pneumonia, asthma, and respiratory failure. So supplemental oxygen therapy uh, helps to improve oxygen levels in the blood, and uh, enhance overall respiratory function. In addition, uh, oxygen generation devices are also essential in emergencies like accidents and heart attacks. So these devices ensure that hospitals and emergency rooms are well prepared in order to handle uh, such critical moments. And furthermore, oxygen generation devices are also used in post-surgical recovery whereby after surgery, uh, patients need optimal conditions uh, for healing. So oxygen therapy uh, promotes tissue repair, uh, reduces uh, infection risk, and ensures open health. And lastly, uh, oxygen generation devices are also used in neonatal care, whereby uh, controlled oxygen therapy helps to maintain optimal oxygen saturation levels in the blood of uh, newborns supporting normal growth and development, and thereby reducing the risk of complications uh, in the neonates. So now that we've looked at the importance of oxygen generation devices in healthcare, let's shift our focus to explore the filters that are used in oxygen generation devices and their critical role in ensuring the purity and the safety of the produced oxygen. So in this presentation, we are focusing on the filters in oxygen concentrators and PSA plants. So let's start by defining what these filters are. So filters in oxygen generation systems, uh, these are essential components that are designed in order to remove impurities 
and contaminants from air before it undergoes oxygen generation process and also from the oxygen that is produced. And um, the roles of these filters in oxygen generation systems are the following. Uh, pastry uh, filters ensure oxygen fluidity. So the primary function of filters is to ensure that the oxygen produced by uh, the generation system is pure and free from harmful particles or pollutants. So this fluid is necessary for the safety for their health. And other roads are moving in areas. So fuels in oxygen generation systems, they act as barriers to prevent impurities such as dust, uh, dust, and other contaminants from entering the oxygen stream. So these impurities can be harmful if they have been breathed in, especially for patients with compromised respiratory systems. And few does also protect oxygen generation devices uh, by uh, preventing foreign particles from entering and potentially causing damage or reducing the efficiency of the system. And this helps to maintain the longevity and also the performance of the oxygen generation systems. Uh, few does also help in meeting regulatory standards. So health facilities uh, need to adhere to strict regulatory standards for the quality and safety of medical gases, including oxygen. And fuelers play a great role in ensuring the compliance, uh, ensuring compliance with these standards. So overall, fuelers are important components of the oxygen generation systems in healthcare, uh, playing a vital role in ensuring the purity, the safety, and effectiveness of the oxygen supply to patients. So moving on. Uh, let's look at the different types of oxygen filters uh, used in oxygen generation devices. So filters in oxygen generation devices can be classified right. Jaraja particles and contaminants from the air before they enter the main filtration system. And the second type is uh, the coalescing filters. So these are the filters that are designed to remove oil uh, and water molecules as well as aerosols from air. And the third type is uh, the molecular uh, filters. So these ones, they contain specialized materials that selectively absorb nitrogen molecules, allowing only oxygen to pass through. And the other type is the carbon filters. And these ones, they are equipped with activated carbon. And uh, these filters, they absorb odors, oil vapors, as well as, as well as well as gases. And the final type uh, is the post filters. So these ones, they serve as the final stage of filtration. Uh, they capture any remaining impurities or contaminants from the produced oxygen. So let's now appreciate these filters. I will look at their specific functions and also their significance. And we will start with the pre-filters. So <clears throat> these ones, they are found in both oxygen concentrators and oxygen plants. So examples of prefuders in oxygen concentrators are the gross particle filters, as shown in picture A. Uh, these ones, they are external to the machine. They are very porous, and they are only intended to filter out large particles, uh, such as dirt and dust. And another example of prefuders uh, in oxygen concentrators are the high-efficiency particulate air filters. Uh, which are in short uh, just called as the HEPA filters, or sometimes they are called the fine particle intake filters. So as you can see in picture B, uh, those are the HEPA filters. Uh, they are internal to the machine. They are either composed of materials such as fiberglass or synthetic fibers. And they filter very fine particles from air before it goes uh, into the compressor. And picture C shows air compressor inlet filters which are also filters that remove date and dust from the air entering into the air compressor 
of an oxygen gas plant. And at the far end is an oil air separator that is used in the air compressor, for example, as a screw compressor that is used in oxygen plants. So the oil air separator separates oil particles uh, from the compressed air. And this oil uh, is used for the, uh, the cooling of the compressor and also for lubrication in order to ensure uh, the smooth operation of the compressor's moving parts. So by effectively filtering out uh, large and fine particles from the air, uh, these pre-filters help to maintain the required oxygen purity. And additionally, uh, the pre-filters play a vital role in protecting other components of the oxygen generation system, such as the compressor, the coercing filters, and also the molecular systems from damage. And by preventing contaminants from reaching these components, uh, the pre-filters help to, ex to extend uh, their lifespan and also reduce the need for maintenance. So, um, in the air compressor, um, like the screw air compressor, there's also another filter that is called an oil filter. So the oil filter removes dirt, sand, uh, metal fillings, and other impurities from oil in the compressor. And these impurities can damage the components of the air compressor. So the significance of the oil filter is that it protects the internal components of the compressor from damage, uh, ensuring a longer lifespan and also reduce the maintenance, uh, the maintenance needs of the compressor itself. Now, let's look at the coalescing filters. So as I already said, uh, these are filters that remove water, oil and aerosols from air uh, that has been filtered by the pre-filters. So these type uh, of filters are found in oxygen plants. So the coalescing filters are located just after the air compressor. And uh, you might find more than two coalescing filters in an oxygen plant. So the coalescing filters uh, might look similar from the outside, uh, but internally they are actually they actually have different structures. So they filter particles of different sizes. And the significance of the coalescing filters um, is to ensure that the produced oxygen is of high purity, ensuring that it meets uh, the quality standards. And coalescing filters also protect zeolite uh, because water can degrade the performance of zeolite by reducing its adsorption capacity. So the water molecules, along with any oil that has been coerced, are directed to the oil in water separator through condensate drains that are connected to the coalescing filters. So the condensate drains, they are either automatically operated and some are manually operated. So the separator removes oil from the water because the mixture can be released into the environment due to environmental regulations. So then the water is directed to a container and thereafter the water is drained. So the significance of the oil in water separator is that it protects the environment, that is by preventing pollution since uh, oil can disrupt the ecosystem if um, released into the environment. So in this case, oxygen, uh, oxygen plants, they meet uh, the strict uh, environmental regulations by ensuring that the discharged water is free of oil and also is free from other contaminants. Uh, now let's look at the carbon filters. So an, an example is the activated carbon tower that is found in oxygen plants. Uh, the activated carbon filters uh, they contain activated carbon as the primary filtering medium. And uh, the carbon filters, they remove odors, they remove oil, uh, oil vapors, and other gaseous contaminants that are present in the air passing through it. So the significance of the carbon filters uh, is that uh, they are highly effective when it comes to filtering out metallic elements due to their large surface area 
and also their adsorption capacity. So by effectively removing impurities and others, these carbon filters, they contribute to enhancing the quality of the product oxygen. Now, um, let's look at the molecular C filters. So these ones, they are used to adsorb nitrogen from the complex air, allowing uh, the correction of concentrated oxygen. So both oxygen concentrators and oxygen plants, they have sifts which contains urate in order to facilitate this filtration. As you can see in picture A, uh, those are molecular sifts from one module of an oxygen concentrator. And picture B is just showing urate that is found in the sifts. So the primary function of the molecular C filter is to selectively adsorb nitrogen molecules from the air. And this is done uh, by the zeroite in the molecular seed beds. So these filters, uh, they allow the production of high purity oxygen that is suitable for medical use, uh, contributing to patient safety and treatment in, uh, effectiveness. Yeah, moving on, let's look at the final type of filters, uh, which are the post filters. So these ones, they remove bacteria and other microorganisms from oxygen. And as you can see, the picture to the left, uh, that's a bacterial filter used in oxygen concentrators. And the picture to your right, that's a bacterial filter um, that is found in oxygen gas plants. So the bacterial filter in oxygen, uh, the bacterial filter in oxygen plants might look similar to the coalescent filters, but they are different. Uh, these ones, they use a specialized coating uh, or materials with antimicrobial micro, uh, or materials uh, with antimicrobial properties. So the significance of the post filters is that they ensure the sterility and also the purity of the produced oxygen, uh, thereby contributing to the safety and also to the well-being of patients. So leaching this far. I'll leave the floor to my colleague, Michael, uh, to continue with the presentation. Over to you, Michael. Uh, thank you, thank thank you, you so much, much Jen, for that uh, recommended presentation. Uh, moving forward now, uh, let's look at how these filters are positioned in hydroxyl concentrators or PSA plants. And also, we are also going to look at some of the components that are integrated together when uh, these filters are operating. But it is worth it to mention that uh, these filters are strategically positioned within oxygen concentrators and PSA plants to optimize the purification process and remove any contaminants from the air effectively. So uh, these filters, if we want to go in detail, we are going to start looking at the pre-filters. So uh, the pre-filters are positioned at the air inlet uh, of the oxygen concentrator or PSA plant. So as you can see from this uh, uh, slide, there is a, the two pictures. The first one up there is uh, for the uh, PSA plant, that's a gross particle filter. And the, the picture down is uh, for oxygen concentrator, which is having a gross particle filter at the back and there's also a HEPA filter. So the different components that are integrated together uh, for these, uh, these filters to execute their functions. Some of them, we are talking of the compressor. So uh, for these filters to trap the gross particles, as Jane mentioned, uh, there is a need to have a, co a compressor that create like a system of generating a negative pressure that suck the air from the outside. And the, apart from that, uh, these filters, they have also their own supporting structure. So uh, the supporting structure, they are there just to hold these pre-filters and the, they, they are holding in their own position to ensure that the filter remains secure in position during operation. And the, that eventually prevents air bypass that may happen around the filter. And we have also some other components like sensors, some devices, uh, especially the oxygen concentrators, 
sometimes they are incorporated with the oxygen monitoring sensors. The reason being is to check the status of the con I mean, uh, condition of the filter. So if it happens that uh, uh, maybe the filter is blocked or the filter is having um, some issues, uh, those sensors are able to send the information to the user, whether it being it the user, the nurse, or uh, the engineer. So apart from uh, looking at these uh, gross particle filters and HEPA filters, uh, there is also oil and air separator. And it is worth it to mention that the oil separator is only found in the PSA oxygen plants. The reason being is that the oxygen concentrators use oil-free compressors. So what this one does to separate oil from the air, which was mixed in the screw element, and that takes us to see its configuration and position. So uh, these filter, uh, these filters are positioned in between the screw element and air dryer in the compressor. So from the picture that you see, uh, the cylinder one is the oil separator. It's the one which separates oil from the air. So basically, it is also integrated with different components. For example, it has the drain valves, which uh, checks the oil being, being built in the, uh, in the tank. So if it happens that oil is building, these drain valves that open to let oil go so that uh, the other mixture coming from the screw element should fill the position. And uh, at the same time, uh, the material that is made from, I mean, the material that has been used to make uh, this tank uh, is made from uh, that material which could withstand or can withstand to the pressure which is coming from the compressor. You agree with me that the, the pressure that is coming from the compressor is so high, so the material should be able to withstand to that pressure. So uh, moving forward, let's look at the second type of uh, the filters, which are coalescing filters and carbon filters. So let's see how these are positioned and uh, configured in the PSA plants. Again, these filters are found in PSA plants for the same reason being that in oxygen concentrators, we are not talking about oil here. So uh, the only way we can separate oil from the air which we want to use to generate the oxygen to be delivered to the patient is only in a PSA plant. So uh, these uh, filters are pressed between the compressor and the medical air storage tank. But again, it depends on the configuration of the uh, PSA plant. Some other PSA plants, they have uh, the compressed air storage tank, others they have not. So if it happens that there is a compressed air storage tank, it means these filters come in between that compressed air storage tank and uh, the medical air storage tank. So um, as you see from the picture, uh, we have the coalescing filters which have been uh, which have been indicated. They are bluish in color, uh, if you see. And we have also a carbon filter being indicated there. Then there's also oil or water separator. So these filters, they are positioned together. So for them to achieve their function, there are also different components that are integrated uh, to these uh, filters. Uh, the first example is, uh, if you see from that picture, uh, those coalescing filters, they have the pressure gauges. So those pressure gauges, they are there to monitor the pressure that is passing through uh, those filters. So the, according to the pressure, uh, according to the magnitude of the pressure, can eventually tell you as an engineer whether the status of that uh, those filters uh, is okay or not. Uh, for example, if the pressure is too high, that may tell you that maybe there's something wrong with the filters. And as an engineer, you need to take a step uh, to have a look at those filters. And uh, apart from that, um, inside the filters what you see outside as the bluish in color that one is just a casing the filtering element is inside so uh there are those few uh filter elements there are also some o-rings which create a tight seal so that there shouldn't be any leakage as these filters are suiting their functions all right so uh there are also some other scenarios whereby these filters they are also integrated or incorporated with the monitoring sensors the reason being is to just monitor the situation, I mean, the condition or the status of these filters. Are they in good condition or do they need to be maintained? So all that information uh, is actually uh, displayed on the PLOC uh, to those who use the PC plants, they know there is a PLOC. All right, so moving uh, forward, 
uh, let's also look at the other type of filters, which are molecular sieve filters. So uh, these ones, they're also found in both oxygen concentrator and the, the PSA plant. This is the heart where the nitrogen is separated from oxygen. And the, this is a heart where oxygen is generated. So uh, if we go to PSA plant, we call this as a generator. And the same applies to uh, the oxygen concentrator. So uh, the sieve filters, they are they're put inside the sieve bed because we're talking about the zeolite. And if you see from the picture, uh, we have two pictures. From the left, those are seed beds which found in oxygen concentrator. And they are placed in the way that they'll be able to receive the compressed air from the compressor and filter out any nitrogen from that air and eventually generate the oxygen, uh, which can be delivered to the patient. The other picture that you see from the right hand side on that slide that's zeolite, which is inside the sieve beds. So for them to achieve their functionality, there are also some other components that are always connected to them. Uh, for example, we are talking about the box which open and close, letting air to go into the sieve beds, and also letting the nitrogen which was trapped to go out from the sieve beds. And again, it's worth it to mention about the PSA plants. So they have also what we call fit in air regrader and back pressure a uh, regrader. So these regrators, they just make sure that they are maintaining the PSA, uh, PSA pressure in the uh, sieve beds. I'll give an example. Uh, let's say from the compressor, there is uh, seven bars of pressure going into into the uh, sieve beds. But then for the PSA, pre uh, PSA pressure in the sieve bed, it's uh, let's say six bars. It means the feed-in air regrader is there to reduce that pressure until it reaches the PSA pressure that is recommended and allowed in the what in the CV bed. So that is the same with the back pressure regrader. Just checks if the pressure in the PSA, I mean in the seed beds, is maintained. So let's look at the final type of filters, which are post filters. Just want to appreciate how these are placed or positioned in both oxygen concentrators and the PSA plant. So uh, these filters, they are positioned between the product tank and the, uh, uh, the oxygen outlet of the system. So whether being it in oxygen concentrator or PSA plant, uh, that is the same. So if you see from those two pictures, the one that are being circled, there are those bacteria filters that I'm mentioning. So from the picture above, that's the bacteria filter that is found inside the oxygen concentrator. And the filter down is, uh, is found in a PSA plant. So that you see is the, to the left is the uh, oxygen storage tank. So the bacteria filter comes just between the oxygen storage tank and the, the patient outlet. So if it's a PSA plant, it means where the piping has gone. If it has gone to the manifold for filling the cylinders, or it has gone to the backup manifold, or it has gone directly to the patient uh, wards, uh, that bacterial filter comes in between because it wants to remove, or it is there to remove any bacteria before the oxygen is delivered uh, to the patient. And again, for the medical air, uh, there is also another bacteria filter which is put between the medical air storage tank and the, the patient outlet because I understand that there are some other conditions where the patient uh, require medical air only. So that medical air also has to be uh, filtered using these bacteria filters. So having looked at uh, the position and the, some components that are integrated with these filters, let's focus on looking at the importance of proper installation and maintenance of this, uh, these filters. So as engineers, we need to take this into consideration that if we are properly installing these filters or we are taking a step in maintaining these filters, uh, the great importance that we are going to look that come in due to that good practice. So the first one is that uh, we are able to minimize any contamination risks. And uh, on this, on this one, what it means is if we have properly installed the filter, or if we see that the condition of the filter is worse, is bad, we need to clean it. If we take those steps, we have cleaned, we have removed any particle that could compromise the life, could compromise if it, it gets delivered to the patient, 
uh, in that way it means we are removing or we are mitigating any risk that may arise on the patient's life and at the same time if we are properly installing these filters we also reduce the downtime and maintenance costs of these uh, devices let me give you an example let's say the gross particle filter is not properly installed maybe you have left some gaps which allow some gross particles to get into the compressor definitely those components i mean those particles who affect the compressor the compressor may break down and the moment the compressor is down it means the whole system is down so if it's for psa plant it means that will not function again uh, if it's a focusing concentrator, it means it can't function because for generation to take place, we need that compressor. So it is most important as engineers to consider that we are following the proper ways or proper guidelines when we are installing uh, these filters. We have uh, full knowledge. And if we see that they need the maintenance, we need to take that uh, in time. So by doing so, we are also able to optimize the device performance. So it means the, uh, the device who continues to be performing in good condition, therefore continues to delivering uh, oxygen as a therapy to the patient. And uh, by doing so, we are also ensuring the safety of the patient. Because if we are continuously regenerating oxygen, there are no any interruptions as far as future issues are, are concerned. It means we'll be able to deliver oxygen to the patient because we continue to be generating that oxygen. And at the same time, if we are able to produce the oxygen of high purity and of high clean, uh, and that is clean, it means we are also able to comply with the regulatory standards. For example, if the regulatory standard is advising you to produce uh, oxygen of maybe about 85% or 90% to the patient, and you are able to generate that 95% or you are able to generate the 90%, it means you are complying with the regulatory standards. So it is most important to us as engineers all the time to consider uh, following the proper way of installing these uh, filters and also if we see any issues we have to maintain uh, these filters. Moving forward let's look at maintenance and repl uh, replacement of filters. So now we just want to dwell a little bit much on uh, how we, we should maintain these filters right. So it's like I would like to share a well detailed information on things that we need to do at the, our health facilities wherever we are. So the first point that we need to take into consideration is uh, that we need to regularly be inspecting uh, these filters and uh, troubleshoot any field, uh, filter related issues. So that's that's most important. So as an institution or as a, as an organization, you need to schedule a time like uh, in a week. How many times do we need to go to the wards and uh, assess the status of the uh, filters? Uh, in a month, how many times do we need to go clean or assess our filters? So uh, we need to schedule that, right? So if there are some other issues which might have uh, risen from there, when you are inspecting, you'll be able to troubleshoot them and you find some issues there. Therefore, you rectify those problems before they lead into stoppage usage of that particular device, which is most important as far as the life of the patient is concerned. And again, if we have found any issues, we have to clean those filters. So if we see that maybe the filter is, is blocked, if we see that the filter is data, if you see that the filter's condition is not okay, you need to clean. But you have to use the right tools. So if we are following the guidelines or recommendations from the manufacturer, we'll be able to follow the right procedure on how you can clean those filters. So others, you may use other, other filters can be cleaned using soap and water. We can wash them. Some other filters, you just need to blow them using whether uh, the compressed air to those having the PSA plants. I think you just blow, let's say, gross particle filter, just use the compressed air uh, right there, or you can use the blower itself. So if uh, it's a filter that you can't wash, you can't do any otherwise, then the next step you can do is just to replace that. So replacement of the filter may actually also, depends on the condition of the filter, as, as I have already said, or the manufacturer's guide. That's why I said it's more important as, a, as engineers or as users uh, to take into consideration about the uh, guidelines from the manufacturer. Moving forward, uh, let's also look at the quality assurance and the regulatory consideration. So as the engineers, it is the most important 
uh, to make sure that any device that we are using is complying with the regulatory standards. So the different standards that talk ab that talk about uh, the medical devices, we need to take time. We need to go through them. We need to study because. Uh, if we are doing so, we'll be very familiar with these standards. And uh, even whenever the device comes onto our uh, health facility, we'll be able uh, to to check if it is complying with the standards. So there are different standards. That's why the first first point we are saying uh, we must have to make sure that if these filters they comply with the industry standards and regulations. So there are different standards, as I said. Uh, we have ISO 13485. That one also talks about medical devices, how should you use the medical devices. There is also ISO 14971. Uh, this one is about risk management. So uh, we have ever talked that if we are not properly handling these filters, we are putting the lives of the patient at risk. Yet if we follow this standard, it will tell you how best you should, you should uh, keep uh, your devices, how you should keep these filters, uh, to comply with that, so that the life of the patient should be at at the at safe. So there's also ISO 29463 series. That one is uh, specifically talking about the filters uh, that remove particles in air. So we should have the time to go through those standards. They will help us. But again, there's this point. Uh, these filters must also be compatible. I mean, biocompatible. So, of course, this was also information which was supposed to be available to the manufacturers. Uh, because I understand that uh, as uh, you are manufacturing uh, anything, you or anything that will be used on the person, uh, on the person, you have to make sure that it complies. I mean, it should be biocompatible. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be something which will bring the negative uh, outcome in the body of a person. Uh, it shouldn't be something which will be will bring the adverse reaction to the, uh, to the patient or whosoever is using. So there's ISO 10933. That one is also a standard which talks about biocompatibility. So the filter might be okay. The filter might fit well. The filter might be able to filter, remove all particles that are not supposed to be delivered to the patient. But uh, you find that the material that has been used to make that filter uh, is not biocompatible. So yes, a person may get 95% uh, of oxygen. But because of the material that was used to make this filter, you find that that person will be reacting. So it is most important. That's for quality assurance. But again, as engineers, we always need to check the manufacturer information. That will tell us whether the information about that filter from that company, that company is certified or not. Is it, is it certified from any regulatory agency or is it not? So we need to be conversant with such information. All right, now let's look at the importance of manufacture recommendations and guidelines. So I mentioned this several times that as engineers, it is more important to consider uh, following the recommendation and guidelines from the manufacturer. Not only the filters, sometimes even in some other devices, let's say the device is just new to your institution. You can't just take that device, you go direct and destroy without following the manual. The manual will be a better teacher to teach you how best you should do your way. So that also applies to the filters. As we have procured the filters, let's say we want to do replacement, and uh, we haven't followed the guidelines from the manufacturer, definitely we'll do the wrong thing. So to avoid uh, installing these filters in that wrong way, which may uh, improve which may actually affect the life of the patient, it is most important to follow the manufacturer recommendations. Because by doing so, we'll make sure that the, uh, the device, the oxygen PSA plant is functioning, is giving optimal performance, and even if the life of the filter will take long, right? So I've mentioned about ensuring the safety of life of the patient, that has been mentioned. And we we'll also uh, make sure that we are complying with the regulatory standards, as was mentioned, and eventually by uh, following those recommendations, we are also mitigating any risk that may arise due to uh, improper use of these filters, right? So let's take this into our consideration that it is most important to follow the recommendations and guidelines from the manufacturer as we are using these filters, whether in PSA plant or in oxygen concentrator. Moving forward, let's look at the impact on now uh, these filters on patient safety and oxygen therapy. So. Uh, these filters, the, uh, they ensure that we are delivering clean and pure oxygen to the patient. If we adhere to the manufacturer's guidelines, 
and during uh, in jury, uh, in doing so we are minimizing risks or contaminations that may actually arise due to improper use and also we are enhancing reliability and longevity of oxygen generation system so if we, we are following the proper way of installing using maintaining these filters then it means we are able to consistently produce oxygen at highest purity which is most important as far as the therapy of the patient is concerned and we are also optimizing the oxygen concentration throughout so my colleague uh, david is going to give us a good uh, good practices and tips in handling filters and let me call my colleague david uh, to take it through it's over to you uh, my colleague david Yeah, thank you so much, Mike and Jenny, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, my name is David Noah, a paramedical engineer under OpenO2. And I'll take you through the last part of the presentation, that is good practices and tips in handling these filters. So the following are some of the good practices and tips in handling these filters. Uh, the first one is regeneration of the used up molecular sieve material. We have also the replacement of closed or worn out filters in sieve beds, avoiding operation of portable oxygen concentrators without filters, and proper scheduling of filter replacement and cleaning. Now, let's look at uh, the regeneration of used uh, molecular uh, sieve material. So, over time, uh, zeolite, which is the uh, molecular filter, used in the sieve beds of oxygen concentrators become saturated with uh, water molecules, affecting its ability to absorb nitrogen efficiently. And this uh, saturation reduces the concentrator's effectiveness in separating nitrogen from oxygen, requiring a regeneration or replacement of zeolite to restore optimal performance. So the process of regenerating this zeolite involves heating the material to remove the adsorbed substances, effectively renewing its uh, filtering capability. You can uh, find the zeolite regeneration video on the YouTube channel of the Oxygen Alliance. And also uh, the link will be posted uh, on the uh, chat. Let's now look at the replacement of closed to worn out filters. So over time, uh, filters in the sieve beds of oxygen concentrators can gather dust, debris, contaminants, gradually closing the filters and restricting airflow through the sieve beds. Exposure to high pressure and high temperature conditions can influence this issue, causing the filters to degrade or wear out, thereby diminishing the concentrator's ability to separate gases. So as you can see uh, in the picture uh, to your left, that is HEPA filter, which uh, has a lot of uh, dust in it. So it is important to inspect every time when refilling sieve pits and practices, uh, I mean, and uh, replace where necessary. So to your light is a picture of uh, a filter which is found in the uh, sieve beds of oxygen concentrators. So uh, it's important every time uh, to inspect when refilling sieve beds and check if it's necessary to replace those filters. So timely replacement of the uh, filters in oxygen concentrators is essential to maintain their efficiency and longevity. Legal replacement ensures that the filters remain clean, allowing for optimal airflow and gas separation within the sieve beds. By promptly replacing the worn out or closed filters, uh, the risk of concentrator malfunction failure or failure is minimized, reducing downtime, ensuring an interrupted oxygen protection for users. Another best practice or tip in handling these uh, filters is avoiding operation of portable oxygen concentrators without uh, filters. So operating concentrators without gross particle or HEPA filters can result in contamination and device malfunction due to the entry of dust, debris, and other contaminants into the system, potentially compromising uh, the quality of the oxygen output. 
So it is important to advise the users, especially nurses, to regularly inspect oxygen concentrators to ensure that the filters, including the gross particle and HEPA filters, are properly installed and functioning. This proactive measure helps maintain uh, the, pu the purity of the oxygen output, has preventing device malfunction and ensuring the safety and well-being of patients that are relying on the uh, oxygen therapy. So, if the concentrators are operating without HEPA filters or uh, gross particle filters, the debris and dust can accumulate into the system and hence uh, pass to the, course, uh, the co compressors, which may lead to worn out of the caps in the co co compressors. And as you can see in the picture to your light, that is uh, a concentrator which uh, was operating without the gross particle filter. And if you can see closely, uh, there is a accumulation of termites that entered because there was no gross particle filter when uh, they were operating that concentrator. And the two bags contain zero right, which has been contaminated by uh, dust uh, which is coming uh, from uh, outside the uh, concentrator because the concentrators were learning without uh, filters. So this is also another uh, effect of using uh, concentrators uh, without filters. So you can see a lot of dust particles uh, accumulated in the concentrator because the concentrator was operating without gross particle filters and other uh, types of filters. Let's now look at uh, another tip or a good practice when handling uh, these filters. Proper scheduling of filter replacement and cleaning. This includes scheduling regular filter replacements and cleaning. Establishing a schedule for regular filter replacements and cleaning is essential uh, for maintaining the optimal performance of oxygen concentrators. Filters can become uh, crushed over time, hindering airflow and reducing the concentrator's ability to effectively separate gases. By adhering to maintenance schedules, users can prevent uh, premature wear and tear of these filters and ensure that the concentrator operates efficiently, providing reliable oxygen therapy to patients without interruption. We have to note that uh, the frequency of inspection and cleaning of the filter may be dependent upon the environmental uh, conditions like the dust and lint. And in conclusion, the uh, remove uh, the the filters in oxygen generation devices uh, helps to effectively remove dust, allergens, and pollutants from the air, ensuring cleaner and healthy indoor uh, environments. Filters play a crucial role in minimizing the spread of airborne pathogens and bacteria, thereby reducing the risk uh, of infectious diseases. Filters also ensure the purity of respiratory gases and medications by removing impurities and contaminants. And finally, regular maintenance of these filters is essential for preventing equipment failures and minimizing downtime. By keeping filters clean and functional, equipment operates efficiently, reducing the risk of uh, malfunctions and breakdowns. This proactive approach in field maintenance also minimizes the need for costly repairs or replacements, leading to cost savings and ensuring an interrupted operation of essential equipment. Now, listening at this point, let me leave the floor to the host uh, to finalize the presentation. Over to you, Sharon. 
Thank you very much, David. And thank you very much for all our engineers for that wonderful presentation. Now we, it's time for question and comments. So if you have any question or comment, you can raise your hand or you can paste it in the chat and I'll read it out or I will acknowledge you and then you can come off mute and ask a question. Yes, so to those who haven't yet sent their emails, if you want us to add your emailing list, please do paste your emails in the chat so that you can get notification on any upcoming event by Oxygen Alliance. Okay. As we're waiting for the comments and questions, we have a question from our Facebook page. So the question leads, why should we place the air intake filter in a shady area and not under the sun? Why should we place the air intake filter in a shade area and not under the sun? So that question to you, our organizer engineers, or any other person who can take this for us, please, you can come off mute and take the question. Yes, Jen, you can take the question. All right, fine. So uh, we should always dry our filters, uh, the gross uh, particle filters, that is the air intake filter in a shady area and not under the sun. Uh, this is because uh, this filter is made with a material that is the disintegrates uh, when, in, when it is being dried uh, under the uh, sunlight. So yeah, we should always make sure that we dry uh this filter uh in a shady place thank you thank you very much jen for that answer i hope the person who sent the question on facebook has been helped okay so if we have no questions and no comments this marks the end of our today's call so thank you very much for joining us today Oh, before we go, okay, we have a comment. Um, so I can request the presenter to share the PPT after the call. Okay, no problem. The presentation will be shared. So don't forget to check out our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel. So please go ahead and check it out and don't forget to subscribe. So if you have any questions for us related to the filters or any other question related to medical oxygen, please do send it to us via our email info at So until next time, it's goodbye from us.